and welcome to another episode of Mark and Mark in the Morning. Blender School's on that's homeroom. All right. Yeah. Uh, so this is an episode um, on uh, actually a Mark and Mark episode that we did earlier in the year. Uh, yeah. This year already we did Blackboard Mobile, but this is a, a, an update to Blackboard Mobile, updates. right, Mark? Updates. Yeah. 2.0. 2.0. Yeah. Uh, is now released, right? Which is better than 1.0. Yeah. yeah. Actually, they're making the product a lot better. How about it? That's the good thing. That's the good it's thing. It's the way to go. So let's talk about some of the new upgrades. Well, um, there's, uh, they've added a new platform. So before, it was uh, well, Android, iOS, OS, uh, BlackBerry. BlackBerry. Yeah. And now they've added WebOS, which okay, is the which Palm. Is, oh, the Palm, people yeah. still use it? They, I guess they still make oh, them. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they, I don't know, maybe they forgot to turn the machines off that make them or something <laughs> okay. like that. But. Okay, so now it's available for the web OS. Okay. Yeah, so, it's exciting. Um, yeah, so basically if you're using you know, your iPhone or an iPad, because an iPad runs off the iOS. Right. Okay, and also with the tablets, looking at the tablet oh, industry, yeah. how about it? Right. There's some new tablets coming out in the market, like the Samsung yeah. Galaxy, right? Yeah. And that runs a what? That's off Android. So that means... It works. It'll actually work. Yeah. yeah. So you want to know what platform your device runs on. Yeah. And I think Blackboard has a pretty good spread now. I mean, yeah, they're, they're covering most. Because Android's pretty major, popular. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the major um, OS is. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is going to benefit probably about, what, four people maybe? The yeah, web OS, oh, maybe five. Let's okay. Let's not make too many enemies. Yeah, I don't <laughs> um, No offense. Just but yeah, so like with Android, um, if you've got a tablet, it'll just scale the app up, make it larger, a little bit easier to see. iOS is a little unusual because they have a specific app. One for, for the iPad. And for and iPad, yeah. for whatever reason. But yeah. I mean, who knows what they're going to bring out in the future. Yeah. They may and, bring and out a different yeah, one. Yeah, and as you see, maybe the Android operating system going on the more tablets, they might actually produce yeah. one specifically for yep, that. So, exactly. Um, again, they'll continue to improve that. So that's yes, great. Exactly. So what else, Mark? They've also now added um, the ability for teachers to do some basic content creation within their courses. And when we say basic, we mean basic. We feel that it's basic, yeah. It's, it's essentially text only. You can do some basic attachments, like on the iOS, you can attach an image. Yeah. So, so if you took a picture with your phone yeah. of the Golden Gate Bridge, you could actually put that into your course. Yeah, you could see that being cool, like you said, if you're on yeah. the road or something. Traveling and you want to put some things in your yeah. course or whatever, yeah. yeah. And remember, there are some teacher content creation tools in already, like you can create announcements. Yes. So that's, Specific you could tools, do yeah. some. But when it comes to actually the yeah. content, it's real basic. So you don't have all the tools like an item, a file, right. an image, you do video URLs like and things like that. It's just basically put some text in text. there. Um, and so forth. That's yeah, it. and I think I think the key to this is it's like a step in in that direction. Yeah, I mean, 1.0 of Blackboard Mobile was very. It was really mostly student use. Yeah, and it was just basically some collaboration things like being able to post an announcement, those things. Yeah. You really couldn't put content right. in. Now no. they're starting to expand the app. So we'll see. So, I mean, I get that question a lot from teachers. Well, how do I create? Well, yeah. now they're starting to allow you to do that. Um, they've also updated the threaded discussions. If you'd used it before, it was kind of like a flat view. Yeah. And especially really... if you had big, if you're like high school and you had yeah. big complex discussions. Didn't really hard. see the threads very well, and now that's, that's a lot better. Yeah, they have like so. a tree style structure. Yeah. And one of the things that they didn't do before, um, you could actually create a thread and, and add to a thread and so forth, but when it came to the blogs, right. you really couldn't create a blog entry. No, all you could do was view and comment. Yeah, you could do the comments. Um, now they've added the ability that you can actually post to the blog, add an entry, a student or teacher. So basically the blog is fully functional. Pretty, yeah, I mean, pretty much. Yeah, yeah pretty it much. is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, for especially for students, yes. it's hundred percent. I mean, like yeah. as a teacher, you won't be able to grade or anything like no, that. No, you can't grade. But, but for, students, for students, yeah, right. they're good to go on. Yeah, blocks, so they can so. create and they can comment. However, they didn't put that functionality where, Mark. No, it's not in the journal. <laughs> and the thing that we found too is that they did not actually advertise that you can do it in the blog. Yeah. Well, if you go to their documentation, it does not say you can post blog entries. We found that out. But we discovered that because it was one of the first things we looked for because we knew it wasn't in 1.0. Yeah. But as soon as I went to blog, my next step was journal and yeah, you can't and in journal. Considering they're basically the same tool, <laughs> I mean... Um, uh, 2.1 maybe? <laughs> yeah, so see. we're hoping that's something that they're just going to transfer over and again as they come out with new versions, that yeah. will be part of it. Right. And so the journals will be fully functional. So if you really want um, your students to actually be able to um, be fully accessible within uh, the blogs or the journals, then you want to use the blogs from a mobile app. Yeah. Well, uh, right remember, now. you can always link can out. Always, link can out. Yeah. yeah and that'll work as well. You can always go right into the web browser and stuff. Yeah. yeah but you're not going to get that um, full look. So. Another one they've added is on the very first page, you can now favorite courses. Now, this thing I really like because yeah. I have like 20 or 30 courses in my right. list yep. and trying to find them is yeah. a real pain. 
And you'll find in the list now, there's a little, it's like a five point star yeah, by star. to the right hand side of each course. You just tap that star yep. and then there's a favorite list. Yeah, and now down below there used to be just courses and organizations. Right. Now they have three buttons down at the bottom, courses, organization, and favorites. So as long as you put a star on either your course or your organization, yeah. it will then show up in the short list, which is kind of nice because it combines both of those two. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. And the nice thing about these new features is you don't need to do anything. Nope. You don't need to download an update or anything like yeah. that. They'll just, they just all work already. Yeah, so. it's basically on the building block side of us. So. Exactly. Um, but, I mean, if they do want to download, if they don't have the app, Yes. We should um, probably point that out. Yeah, right? basically, if you don't have the app, you want to go to whichever device you're running uh, to that app store. So, for example, if you're dealing with Apple, yeah. um, everything goes through the Apple App Store, and right. it'll be two separate apps one for the iPad and one for the iPhone. Yeah, and I think they actually have them packaged together now, Correct. so you just get one you and it'll grab one you both. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I can't remember what they call it for Blackberry, it's like Marketplace or something yeah, like that. Something but like that. whatever is the way to get apps on your device, search for Blackboard or Blackboard Learn is like the full name um, and then also if you just google blackboard mobile yeah you'll find it yeah and it'll go to the site and ask you which device and boom you click it it'll it's take really you easy. to your store and it's all um, free yeah you know, so. and remember that's one of two mobile devices or mobile apps that we actually provide oh, you that's right yeah. uh, we actually provide you study mate 2 which is another mobile app uh, we did an uh, an actual uh, mark yeah, mark did. episode on study mate and mm -hmm. also that mobile app in fact i think they were combined I think in so. mark mark uh, so check that out uh, i know it was one of the fall episodes i have no idea what number um, <laughs> let's say 34 yeah something like that yeah. That's good, that's good yeah. So 34, something like that. Just go watch. Whatever 34 is, watch it, and it'll be useful information. Are we up to 34? I don't know. I want to thank everyone for watching another episode of Mark and Mark in the Morning. Blaine Schools on Nets Homeroom. Have a great day.